we can deliberately deorbit our satellite or we can try and refuel it. But there are other ways people are, are actually actively working on. Yes, I mean, the trouble is there are a lot of spacecraft from the past which yeah. are still up there, which were not yeah. ever designed to be de orbited or something went wrong or they didn't, people didn't even bother. Or, or even the spacecraft, the rocket bodies, the smaller bits, all of which contribute to the yeah. space jump problem. So for large bits of space jump, people have started investigating, maybe we can do some sort of cleanup. Yeah. This is never going to work for the 10 centimetre size things, but there's a bunch of pretty large spacecraft that are up there that sooner or later something's going to hit them and blow them into pieces. I mean, we saw earlier there's about 2,000 inactive satellites alone, right? So clearly 2,000 decent sized chunks of things that we can deal with. And sooner or later they're going to explode, so it would be really good if we can get them out of circulation before yeah. something hits them and blows them to pieces. And so there have been various suggestions. These things were not designed to be deorbited in any yeah. sensible way, so it's a difficult task, but most people suggest something like firing a net to capture it from. So you'd send a small rocket up uh, that yep. would rendezvous with it, fire a net to capture it, because it's probably tumbling if it's out of control. Exactly. You can't just easily dock with it. Um, and then fire the retro rockets on your thing to bring it down to burn up in the atmosphere. And look, there are groups looking at this. NASA's announced they're trying to develop a, a space tug for to hook into it and then drag it down. I think there's a group in the UK who's looked at net. So people are trying and wanting to do this. Yeah, and so we're going to need to do this to get rid of the big chunks, but then who pays for it? Yeah. If it's a, a Russian spy satellite from the 1970s, are the Russians really going to pay to deorbit it now? I don't think so. And, and I guess this is the problem, right? You have to build a spacecraft, which costs money and everything we talked about, just for its own purpose to be destroyed. That's right. Which is a hard ask of funders. Yes. Um, so people have looked at other ways of doing yep. things. I mean, one possibility, for example, is to put airbags yep. so that a small rocket becomes as much bigger when you inflate an airbag around it, which means the drag gets larger. So something that might have taken 100 years to come down might come down in only five years yep. if you make its drag area much bigger by inflating an airbag around it. Or, of course, having thrusters to deorbit yep. it. Another thing that's been researched here at Mount Stromlo is the idea of using lasers to deorbit particularly the smaller bits of space junk. That's right, because we've only talked about the big satellites and the rocket bodies, but as we saw, there are hundreds of thousands to hundreds of millions of these smaller bits up there. And so the idea here is if you get a small, maybe 10, 20 centimetre piece of junk, you can fire a laser beam at it as it comes over, and the laser beam does actually apply a bit of a force to it. So it's what we call photon pressure, right? That right, the light is bouncing off it, and as it bounces off it, it imparts a bit of momentum to it, and that, not in one orbit, but over several orbits, could maybe slow it down and change the orbit until you bring it down into a lower orbit where it might eventually burn up with the atmosphere. So you're essentially trying to accelerate the natural process, much as you would do with thrusters, but instead of using onboard fuel, you're using light. Now, we can't really do this on Earth that often, but if you have a powerful enough laser in space, you can actually affect it. So ideally these sort of things should be done before things get out of control in space. We need to remove the big ones so they don't get blown to pieces, make sure that everybody reliably deorbits their spacecraft or puts them in junkyard orbits. Um, and if that fails and the Kessler syndrome takes off or there's a space war and there's a huge yeah. cloud of debris up there, we could be cut off from space unless we can do something like this. It is, and I guess this kind of goes into the next issue, right? There's actually legal and political issues that are surrounding this because on one case, anything you could do to clean up space is great. On another, it immediately can also be used as a weapon to affect someone else's salary. And it's going to cost money, and then who's going to pay for it? So That's let's right. talk about the legal issues next.